Aha, there you are. A very, very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McClure. And we are, of course, live on Facebook Live, the world's top platform. <coughs> welcome, 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 I say, to one hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment. Lovely to have you along. I hope you can all hear me and see me. So there we are. <coughs> now, a little bit of a dry throat tonight, so I'll have a, a tiny drop of water just to start us off. Mm. Might as well carry on the way we have started. Welcome, welcome. Jim Clark's watching. Henry Pollock Newton, David Hemsley, Giuseppe Bacchetti is with us. Welcome, 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 everybody. Spread the word, of course, and come and join us for one hour. Now, we've a lot to get through tonight. The London terror attacks. Seven killed, 48 injured, three assailants shot dead by the police or the security forces. 12 people arrested in barking. On it goes. Terror, terror, terror. We've had Manchester tonight. Manchester is healing. The wonderful Ariana Grande is doing her concert as we speak. So there we go. Good evening, Scotty. Good evening, Kevin. David Lee Weir, Chris Mack, Charles Raffin, and Shug McGinty. Lovely to have you all with us tonight. And of course, we'll have share points throughout the hour when we all share, 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 share. But uh, I'll tell you all about them. I noticed tonight uh, we had a sound problem earlier on the short promo. And uh, it's interesting. We had audio only. So you'll see an extra piece of audio up tonight and you can tell me what you think you have the choice if you think okay, i love seeing scotty in vision great if you can't stand it and can't cope with my big fizzog then we could do it in audio it's up to yourselves scotty how are you says we waddy i'm dinky do thank you waddy thank you for asking robert bean's watching tremendous stuff so we're discussing the terror attacks tonight folks and um let me know what you think. You've got interactivity there, full interactivity, which is tremendous stuff. So do let me know what you think. What is this here? Let me just hear. Yes. Hello, George. Hello, George. How are you? Are you brand new? We can't actually hear you on this at the moment. Are you Skyping or are you on Messenger? You're on Messenger. Excellent. So we can't actually hear you. Let me just see if I can get you heard, George. Try again. Hello, George. Yes, a little bit better. We can hear a little bit of you. That's fantastic. I'll just check that I've got full volume. There we go. Right. Can you not get it, George? Keep trying, George, because we are broadcasting loud and proud here. Okay, I'll try again. And I just wonder, in case we're being limited because of the popularity of the program. No problem. Okay, I'll try again, Scott. Try again, George. Lovely to have you with us, by the way, and dinky do. Bye. Thank you, do to you, sir. Bye bye, just now. There we are. George Mullen, of course, just calling in. Fantastic stuff. And uh, I'm just checking that, uh, that everybody can get it. We've certainly got the numbers here tonight, folks, so we are fine. Wonderful. It made me emotional watching the concert, says Steve Wright. Absolutely. Here's George back again. Yes. Oh, no, that's him just ringing off. Excellent. Scotty, our specs are similar, says we Wardy. Excellent, Wardy. Good stuff. Uh, True Radio tuned in. Dinky Dunn, says Henry Pollock Newton. Fantastic, Henry. We'll need to hear more about that. I've had a lot of approaches from radio stations wondering is there any way that they can take a feed of this wonderful program. All due to your good selves, my dears. So there we are. Syria attacked on a daily basis. The media silences Eddie Dobie Sr. Yes, uh, put it on loudspeaker, says Angie Thompson. That was him in loudspeaker. He was sounding a wee bit distant tonight, Angie. So there we go. So what can we do about these terror attacks? You tell me, guys. You've got your opinion. Remember, we've only got an hour. Little bit of housekeeping. You'll find I'm doing quite a lot of broadcasting on Periscope, and I've done a tribute 
to the people of Manchester, which you should see shared on Facebook. If you'd be good enough to watch that and share it, that would be fantastic. Excellent, says Henry Pollock-Newton. Are you getting good stuff, Henry? You'll need to tell me how you're doing it and what you're doing. But it doesn't matter at the moment. As long as you're doing it and you're happy with it, that's what matters. So there we go. Um, that's Henry. He's got True Radio, T-R-O-O, -O, True Radio. And uh, he's taking a feed from the show tonight. Bring back the Guardian Angels, Scotty says Kevin Roberts. Yes, indeed. Hi, Scotty. I'm calling from sunny Vancouver Island, is uh, Jim Robin. Tremendous stuff, Jim. That's great. Jim is in Vancouver in Canada. Sunny Vancouver. Uh, deport known sympathizers, says Gary Crossan. Yes, but Gary, we've got to get the message out to these people that this will never, ever, ever be the work of Allah. Allah, would, Allah is very, very disappointed and upset in these people that don't follow his word, the word of God. So there you are. Uh, all these folk on the radar should be sent out of our country, says Angie Thompson. Yes, but Angie, you've got to watch that you don't have a knee-jerk reaction. Remember the 60 million people in this country. And uh, if you've got half a dozen dangerous people, I'm in my bunker in Paisley. You're more than welcome, Scotty. Bring a bottle. <laughs> Luke Jones likes the fact that Julie Ann Scott is watching. If you've just joined us, folks, and you're wondering who on earth has popped up in your Facebook, it's me, Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster. We're broadcasting live on Facebook Live, a fabulous platform, and it's great to be with you all. Uh, so there we go. If you're in your bunker, that's absolutely fine. We don't mind people in their bunker. And uh, I have, of course, um, Twitter and Facebook and everything in front of me, guys, so we can see what is what. Um, I've just been told 20,000 um, tweets at the moment. Hey, Scotty, I'm gutted that uh, Noel didn't perform with Liam tonight. You want to see Oasis reform, says Johnny M. Linney. Absolutely, Johnny. And you were wondering why we were up earlier in audio only. That was, uh, I got a little message from Facebook to say it's possible to do it in audio if you don't want to do it in video. And I thought we'd better try it. I mean, known IS sympathizers. They're not representative of true Muslims. No, they are most certainly not. So there we are. Ian Cook's watching up in Dundee there. A very fine fellow and a great organist, of course. Marvellous on the keyboards, our Ian is. Ian Cook, dinky-doo to you, I say. Say hi to Vivienne Parker, please, Scotty. Dinky-doo, I will indeed. Yes, of course I can say hi to Vivienne Parker. Now, guys, if you're watching in India, Africa, Canada, America, Madagascar, Australia, New Zealand, the Arctic, the Antarctic, Russia, China, Japan, do tell us where you are watching from. Very, very important. Terrorists have outnumbered us. It's a fact, Scotty, says Steve Burroughs. No, Steve, the terrorists will never, ever, ever outnumber us. Good will always triumph over evil. I can tell you that. Big shout out to Swansea East Carnival Display Band, who won first place. Well done, guys. What do you do with the Carnival Display Band? Tell us more about it. Julian Scott down in Wales there. Uh, the Tories are disgusting, uh, says Shug McGinty. So there you are. I've not got a problem with terriers. The lovely wee dogs, says Robert Bain. Robert Bain, stop your nonsense. This is a serious discussion tonight on the uh, London and Manchester attacks. Abject honesty, re our foreign policy since at least 1991. And it's the, consequence, it's the consequences of a couple of tweets to the disenfranchised individual is enough to have them turn themselves into a weapon. Now, Carol McNamara says see more, but I'm not going to risk that because the last time we lost the whole broadcast. Waj is watching. Waj Hashmai in Manchester. Dinky do, Waj. Sandy Howden, you're a wonderful man, Scotty. So are you, Sandy Howden. Don't underestimate yourself. You have many, many gifts. 
Uh, so there we go. Dinky do, Scotty says Wadge. Dinky do to you, Wadge. Lovely to have you with us on this live program, guys. The programs are going from strength to strength. Scotty McClure is actually better known now, believe it or not, as the world's top broadcaster than he was live on the radio. So there you are. When I was live in the radio, it was absolutely mega. When people inquiring what happened at Scott FM, I don't know what happened at Scott FM. What I can assure you of, it was absolutely nothing that I said or did. It was a huge, huge, huge injustice to me, to the people of Scotland, to the radio station, to the radio station owners, a massive, massive injustice when Scotty McClure disappeared from Scott FM. But there was no rhyme or reason for it, and everybody was absolutely shocked. Even the newspapers were taken aback. They were shocked as well, and a bit disappointed. So there you go. But we never found out, and two of the people that were responsible for it have now passed away to the next world, so we shan't find out what was going on behind the scenes, but it was very, very strange, I have to say. And I, of course, had to suck it up. I was out of work for almost two days. Uh, good evening from Mary Hill in Glasgow. Not quite Madagascar or Micronesia, but it's at home. Yes. And uh, how do you think Mrs. May's campaign is going to do? Do you think it's imploding, says George Mullen? I have been amazed at the dreadful, dreadful, dreadful week that Theresa May and uh, her party have had. And I've been even more amazed at the strides forward made by Mr. Corbyn. But somebody sent me a very interesting video, and I've, I've sent it round to all of you on Facebook. And it's um, my dear, wonderful friend who I thoroughly appreciated and enjoyed meeting. Tony Ben, the late Tony Ben, Anthony Wedgwood Ben, Viscount Stansgate, and uh, he'd given all that up, and what a lovely, lovely guy, and what a brilliant, brilliant mind, one of the finest politicians this country has ever had, and um, oh gosh, Century 105.4 was never the same when you left, Scotty, says Kevin Roberts, what do you think of the PM saying enough is enough? We are a band that cater for three onwards. Other bands go to my homepage. You'll see videos of them. It looks like the Tories are trying to lose, says Carol McNamara. You think the game's up, Carol? But I've been amazed at the strides that Mr. Corbyn has made. Now, what I think will happen eventually, Scotland will do its own thing, right? Scotland is it going to become self-determined, right? That's what will happen, self-determination for Scotland and change of management and run from here. And that country will be absolutely superb. It's a superb place to live and work, and it's getting better and better. It's never been better run, and uh, I see great strides forward. But I can see England um, adopting uh, Mr. Corbyn's policies because his manifesto has substance to it and he's able to actually uh, sell that into the nation. But the story I was going to tell you, in this little video, which you should see on my Facebook, is um, the wonderful Tony Benn on his feet in the House of Commons explaining to the world what will happen if we go into the Middle East? It's at the start of the Gulf War. And um, if you look beside him, you'll see the late, great Tam Diel, right? Tam Diel of the Bins. And if you look just behind him, you will see a rather youthful Jeremy Corbyn with a big beard, obviously drinking in every word the great man is saying. So there you are. So he's had a very, very interesting time. Uh, John Tom's problem is Corbyn isn't able to contain internal issues. Nicola has a strong team and we're a rich country. Yes, I think, John Tom's, just to put you in the picture, uh, we're not comparing like with like. Nicola runs Scotland. And Corbyn, obviously, uh, is, is standing for the national thing. Scotland will become independent and will self-determine. 
Uh, that's, uh, that's a given because every Scot is up for independence. Some lack confidence. They don't even believe in themselves and they struggle to believe in a Scottish government. You can see that going no matter who it is. They're always going to try and cling on to mama and try and keep breastfeeding. But in actual fact, it's the other way about. London is breastfeeding off Scotland. Right, forty billion pounds a year goes south. So there you go. So very interesting. We're talking. Um, you know, I'm leaving Nicola aside. I'm leaving Scotland aside here, John Thompson. And I'm talking about um, what's going to happen in England. Um, and Mr. Corbyn has definitely made strides forward there. The Labour Party, I don't think, will ever come back in Scotland. They're just going to wander about in the wilderness because their greatest mistake in the whole history of the Labour movement was not backing independence for Scotland. They betrayed the people of Scotland. They betrayed the roots of the labour movement and bang, implosion, almost virtual annihilation, wandering about in the in the wilderness and they'll stay in the wilderness. So there you go. And uh, I'm a currently a paid up member of the Conservative Party, says Louis Faber, but their campaign has been a complete and utter con. It makes me consider whether I should be reviewing my membership. Now, Louis Faber, the message I would say to a genius like yourself, and you are a genius, I don't mean that in any patronizing way. I've observed your stuff. You're a very, very clever and switched on man. But uh, if you look back at my own um, interests in politics, now I am no political animal. I am not party political or anything of the sort. I'm an economist who's interested in the success of the economy and uh, the um, British economy, I hear my doots about, I'm very concerned about, but the Scottish economy, I have absolutely no fears at all. Uh, that could be made to run extremely well and extremely efficiently and effectively. I mean, it's running pretty good now when you consider this austerity, which was a massive con. Uh, you know, so the banks could be bailed out with uh, with your money. But what's very very interesting here, and I have to and I have to tell you this, I at one point was very strong on the Tory party when they were a patrician party, and the Scottish Conservative and Unionist party. And people, you know, know that I was very strong on that because I believe very much in uh, the monarchy as an ultimate focus in this country. I won't use the word power because people say they haven't got power. That's a lot of nonsense. But focus, right? The crown is the focus for this country. There is no such country as Britain. Britain is an amalgamation of Scotland, England, Northern Ireland, and Wales. All right? These separate countries, principalities, um, you you name it, right? Okay, so that's, that's the actual facts at the moment. But I got my eyes open when I realized what had been happening to Scotland probably for 310 years. Um, but certainly uh, in the last 60, 70 years, certainly since the Second World War, and Thatcher assets stripped Scotland, right? All along the Clyde, uh, that all disappeared at the hands of Thatcher due to a lot of self-interest. So there you are. Uh, Wadge, you talk nonsense, says Dave Hemsley. No, I don't think he does, Dave. Scotty, I'd love to hear your thoughts on a resource-based economy. Well, of course, I am basically a meritocrat because the way we don't subscribe to a class system in Scotland, right? But we have had our pillars of Scotland. So you had the church was a big one, the two churches, the Catholic Church operating from Rome and the Church of Scotland operating from 121 George Street in Edinburgh, but I think a lot of their power has been um, uh, didacted uh, in, in recent times. Uh, Corbyn could win outright next Thursday. The British people are totally fed up with Tory austerity, Brexit and terrorism. You know, I, I, I cannot argue with that. I think you've got a very, very fair point there. 
Uh, they're certainly very, very tired of it, and the electorate are tired of all the carry on. Now, Brexit, I think, should be put on ice. It should be cancelled or put on ice. And with all the U-turns that have been made from the present administration, it wouldn't take too much to ring up Mr. Juncker or uh, to, to ring up Donald Tusk and to say, look, about this Article 50, that letter we sent you, just tear that up just now because we've got uh, too much going on, there's too much at stake, and we love you guys as well. Uh, what we'd be looking for is a better deal and we'll hang on, okay? So it's a deal to hang on we should be looking for. Um, now, who have we got? Need to dare Scotty catch up tomorrow night, matey. Night night, John Toms, top businessman, up very early in the morning. Uh, good evening, Scotty Dinky Doo, says Andy McCrory. It can't be cancelled, says Dave Hemsley. Dave Hemsley, what nonsense are you talking? What do you mean it can't be cancelled? Politics is the art of the possible. Right? It's only a question of getting them to deliver. Of course, Brexit could be cancelled at the drop of a hat, right? That referendum was really just indicative. And remember, that referendum was very, very flawed. It was on Duff Gen. All right? I even thought leave would be good tactically. But I didn't expect it to come anywhere near that. And remember, the British people did not vote to leave Europe. The British people did not vote to leave Europe. Just slightly over half voted to leave Europe. You've got to be aware of that. It's the same with the Scottish referendum when you get critics. Just over half said they didn't want independence because they'd been freaked out by a former Prime Minister. All right. Uh, Eddie Dober, yes, looks like fake news in London. Lee Bosak Geddes says... Um, make it void, says Michael McGuigan. Yes, of course you could make Brexit void. These people are very powerful. It's just a question of talking. It's what a friend of mine who's very high up in business says to me. Scotty, that's a conversation. So there you are. Uh, Brexit was a Tory infight. Yes, it was. It was a cat fight with the Conservative Party. It probably should have been two-thirds majority, says Louis Faber. Two-thirds majority to remain or to leave, Louis. You'll have to qualify that one. Scotty McCaps Manifesto, says Roy Brownlow. Absolutely. Well, we're just telling it like it is the Truth Channel. By the way, guys, if you want to help me with my media company, go fund me. Take it serious instead of going, ah, I'm no bothering with him. You know, absolutely. Get on to gofundme.com forward slash Scotty Ivan McClue and get your tenors out and stick them in there. Let's get the equipment and the set set up. Four eyes are better than two, Jim. Vote Labour, get Tory. Red, blue, both Tory rats, says Shug McGinty. I think there has been definitely a lot of just um, becoming subservient. You see, we need leaders who are actual leaders. Now, this is reflected in our society today. I remember once putting in for a top job, and the chairperson said, I'll send your letter on to the headhunters, Scotty. And I thought, no, 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 no. You're the chairperson. You're the one in the big seat who's been chosen for your decision-making qualities. You're the one on the very big money. You have a look at my letter and see if you're interested or not and come back to me. Never mind all this headhunters, their job is to make phone calls. Right, I don't think Scotty has the first clue of what a true resource-based economy is. Gary, what do you want to know? Right, um, we need statesmen in politics, like back in the day, Churchill, Chamberlain, these people. I quite like Hilary Benn, well, I certainly loved his father, and I'd consider voting Labour if he were the leader, says Louis Faber. Yes, but these guys need to really get stuck in and say, here's what's happening to this country. They need to be like Jack Russell Terriers. Take the country and pick it up and shake it by the neck and say, here's what's happening. Here's the foreign policy. Right, here's the foreign policy. Remember, you have the Prime Minister or the First Lord of the Treasury, the next most powerful appointment, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, 
the second Lord of the Treasury, and then you've got the Foreign Secretary. So there we go. That's what we're needing. Um, what do you think about London Muslims raising over 17k in the last 24 hours for the victims of this latest nutter attack? Johnny M. Linney, right? I know a lot about the Muslim community, right? I'm very close to a lot of elements of the Muslim community. And Islam is a peaceful religion, right? Very, very important. And remember, we have millions of Muslims in this country. These people who are causing the terror are, as you say, nut cases, very dangerous nut cases, but that's what they are. They are most certainly not doing it in the name of Allah. I can tell you that unreservedly and unequivocally. Uh, Scotty, have you got a 13 amp fuse for your GoFundMe studio? Says uh, Roy Brown. No, Roy, if you want to donate a 13 amp fuse, do that. Uh, so there we go. What do you think? Uh, yes, we've got that one. A British foreign policy has been flawed for decades. We are puppets to the US administrations. We can't afford to be the world's police any longer. Lee Faber, that's a very, very uh, erudite comment, I have to say. You'll find that countries have taken tons of policing the world. And it's a very, very expensive business, right? Now, this country obviously makes a lot of money from selling armaments and things like that. But you're chucking a load of brass and explosives into sand, into deserts, right? And although it might make some people money, I'm quite sure they could make far more by, um, you know, making beautiful musical instruments and things like that, by teaching dance and singing. Scotty, I see you've got a couple of idiots on tonight with stupid comments. Jim Bob, etc. Yes. Um, Islam is peaceful if you're Islamic. What if you're not, says Roy Brown? Not a problem, Roy. You, you know, there's room for everybody. You see, you can only have a problem if you've got them and us if there's just us there is no problem so you've got to be very careful that you who you have a them and us with i think that's what's going on there religion has never ever ever caused a problem in the world what causes a problem in the world is uh, a lack of knowledge and understanding of religion so there you are uh, it's no surprise the West don't want an is Islamic State when the last one took the West 621 years to squash the Ottoman Empire. Check it out. I don't need to check it out, Gary. I know my history inside out, the Ottoman Empire. Uh, Scotty, what did you have for dinner? Lovely dinner today. We had the roast chicken. So there you go. Val Hansen's watching. Thank you, Val. Lovely to have you with us. Scotty McClue is live, guys, on Facebook Live. Come and join us. Now, what time are we at? Half past. Right. Time for a massive, massive sharing. And could you all type, folks? Could you start typing? I'm watching Scotty McClue live on Facebook Live. Uh, right click on the uh, URL at the top of the page, the address at the top of the page on the address bar. Right click on that and send it round in your message. Very, very important. We should have millions and millions and millions watching this program right now. Uh, the way the terrorist attacks are going, we're all sitting ducks. The Ottoman Empire proves that the Islamic State is, is not an ideology. Then is it? Well, you have the four pillars of Islam. I think all religion is ideological. There's no doubt about that. What's your opinion on a two-state solution? What do you mean, Louis? Uh, you need to qualify these things. You're running on with that wonderful big brain of yours, and you're expecting the rest of us to be total mind readers. I can come some way towards that, but I'm not, um, you know, an absolute psychic. So there you are. Big respect to the police and other authorities in London last night. Yes, Rab, absolutely. I don't know if you've seen my tribute to Manchester. You'll get it on YouTube if you can't see it on Facebook. It was a Periscope broadcast last Friday morning. Week, week past on Friday, I should say, just after 11 o'clock in the morning. Ideology, says Gary Williams. 
Uh, so there we go. Yes, we are understanding you, Gary. That is not a problem. If you've just joined us, a very warm welcome to the Scotty McClure Show. We're live on Facebook Live. That's the big one. One of the world's great broadcast platforms. And uh, we want to get the numbers up. So every single one of you, keep sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing. This is our 37th live program. Excellent stuff. Now, uh, who have we got there? Worship the McClure, you can't go wrong, says Roy Brownlow. Absolutely. Roy, you'll always get the truth and you'll get it well thought out from Scotty McClure. If I don't know something, I will ask you. It's as simple as that. And remember, if somebody's got a problem with you, that's their problem. So there you go. Great tribute to Manchester, Scotty, says Steve Burrows. Thank you, Steve. I was hoping you'd see it. As I say, I uh, didn't have a chance to prepare for it. So it's uh, from the heart and it's off the top of the head. But uh, I hope it said what needed saying at the time. I see it's your birthday soon. Are you giving your age away, says George Mullen? No, but I'll tell you what, George, I can retire in 26 years if I so wish. So I was quite excited with that, but I doubt I'll take anybody up on it, to be quite honest. Have I got some tea hanging about here? A wee cup of tea. I'm sure I saw some tea earlier. It's over on the other desk. I'll get it later. I'll have a sip of water. Mm. We should really have a very short commercial break, unlike uh, modern radio stations that have, like, you know, 20 years of commercials. In the middle, all that sort of stuff. Try to make Scotland a target, a base on either side of Glasgow, says Eddie Doby Sr. And Eddie, do you not remember? Um, I used to run the Liberty boat back and forward for the Americans when they won the Holy Loch. So there we are. You had the Proteus and the Hunley and the, the Simon Lake all there. Good evening, Scotty. Sorry I'm late, says Daniel Jos. You are here, Daniel. That's what matters. You'll be getting your money out of your... Ticket then, says George Mullen. Religion is the cause of most of the trouble in the world. I'm glad I'm an atheist. I remember an atheist saying to me, tell me, I'm an atheist for God's sake. So there you go. Um, no, religion's not the cause of any trouble, Alfred James Wright. You're completely wrong. It's a lack of knowledge and understanding. If we had a complete knowledge and understanding of each other's beliefs and um, um, wills and thoughts, then we'd be absolutely fine. Your bus ticket, I meant. Oh, I see what you mean. Yes, I'm with you now. I wondered what you're on about. Scotty, I got called a traitor yesterday, and the guy told me King James signed the Scots away in a cellar in uh, what's now uh, a, a well-known hamburger joint in Edinburgh. So there you go. Very, very interesting, Sandy. Yes, I have to say. But what about the Jacobus, the followers of the Jacobites, the followers of James? Very, very interesting. Uh, I blame the women for everything, says Roy Brownlow. <laughs> you naughty, naughty man, Roy. Uh, so there you are. Uh, Sandy, you shouldn't have been called a traitor. That's a little bit on the harsh side. Everybody that votes no to an independent Scotland is not necessarily a traitor. They just lack confidence. They are. But I have heard that the desire for independence of Scotland is touching 72%. That's not bad, is it? I agree, Roy, says George Mullen. Do you think orange walks should be banned, says Louis Faber? I discussed this live on a programme on Scott FM, right across 2.2 million people in the central belt of Scotland. And um, a lot of people who were uh, Catholic actually were not too bothered about the orange walks uh, and a lot of orange people were saying well it's it's tradition but we try and make sure we don't offend etc etc but i really think um you know the whole how can i say the whole sort of um religious thing in central scotland has changed completely you know I think it's definitely changed completely. There's no doubt about it. Independence all the way, says Andrea Jacobite Paure. Uh, Scotty, I've just tagged you in a poem I wrote about you 19 years ago on your main Facebook page, says Gary Williams. Did you do, Gary? Uh, Sandy Howden, I've had worse, Scotty. Another one was 
Quizzling, oh Sandy, these are harsh. I can see where you're coming from. Labour in 1947, 48, they did some tremendous things. We could do with that kind of forward stride back. And in actual fact, we might well get it. Because the way that uh, Theresa May and her campaign has been going this week, I mean, I was shocked to think that these people are running the country or attempting to run the country. I mean, I was absolutely shocked. So there you are. Hey, Scotty, shut your eyes in the bath. I love your program, says Doreen Red. Well, shut your eyes. You're in the bath. <laughs> That's like that lovely story when uh, there's a lady in the bath and she's soaking away there. And the front door was open and this one says, Hello, everybody in? And she parents says, Hello, uh, who is it? He says, um, it's the blind man from the village. She says, oh, he's all right. She says, okay, if you just come up the stairs, I'm just in the bathroom, you can come in. So he comes in, he says, hello, where would you like me to hang the Venetians? <sighs> uh, right, get cramp under my foot cures, please, Roy Brownlow. Roy, do you smoke, is the first question I ask. Um, has devolution segregated Scotland and the UK? No, not a bit of it, Kevin Roberts. In fact, what would make me laugh if it wasn't so serious is that the other parties, the unionists, I mean, I don't understand why you've got unionist parties in a Scottish parliament. Step one, can't understand that at all. What's the point of that, right? So if you're in a Scottish parliament, you should all be pro-Scotland. If you're pro-Scotland, you're pro-independence, right? Because independence is what will put Scotland back on its feet, right? So, that's that. Now, here's the other, here's the other side of that. What we've been getting is we nobody wants to go back to a divisive referendum about independence. Now, nobody minds one bit. They don't bother a scoosh. It's only a tick in a box. The Scots are not afraid of work. You might think it, but they're not. You provide the jobs, the Scots will work, right? So they're not afraid of going into school and putting a tick in a box, right? So there you go. So it's not divisive at all. It's not going back to anything. It doesn't mean that the First Minister and her government have at all taken their eyes off the ball of running the country, what the opposition parties are calling the day job. They've done a superb day job. Scotland's never been better run than it is now by Alex Salmond and now Nicola Sturgeon. So there you go. And those are the facts, guys. No matter what your politics are, I'm not interested in party politics. I'm not a spokesperson for the Tories or Labour or the Lib Dems or the Greens or the SNP. I'm not interested. I'm just giving you the facts, right? Uh, what's the point of nationalist parties and a unionist parliament? Well, because we have got a live union at the moment and the unionist parliament is supposed to be the mother parliament. So you're going to have to have representatives from the other parliaments in there. That's what you're going to have to do if you've got such a power in Scotland. So if you're holding the balance of power, then you need to be represented at the mother parliament. Right? As soon as we cut loose, there'll be no need for any of that. Uh, John Alexander Balf is watching. Gary Williams and 21 others have just shared the video. Right, let's have a massive share. Share, 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 share. Share now, I say. And uh, what's the time? 20 minutes uh, is all we've got left, guys. I cannot believe it. Time flies when you're enjoying yourselves. Uh, I could open up the Skype if you want to make calls. Do let me know. Uh, better together, my backside. Yes, all the way to Indie Ref 2, says Tracy McKinnon. Of course, we haven't been better together for 310 years. I mean, there was a famine in Scotland when we did get taken over, so we were weak at the time, and we got sold out by aristocrats. There was no famine there, although there'd been uh, internecine fighting with them to such an extent that they'd managed to to bankrupt themselves. And of course, 15, uh, you know, so you had 1707 
You had the Union of the Parliament. 1603, Union of the Crowns, that's the sideshow, nothing to do with the uh, with independence. Keep the crown, keep the queen, not a problem. And uh, 1707, the Union of the Parliaments. And then, in eight years later, you had Bonnie Prince Charlie back with the first rising. And then, 30 years later, the second rising. Incredible. Uh, Alfred James Wright, the SNP made a mess of education in, in Scotland. Fact, no, no, not at all. Alfred James Wright, I can tell you, education in Scotland is still the foremost education in the country. If you want to see poor education, get yourself down to the home counties. They're the ones that are running behind big style. All right, so you can't lay the blame of that at the SB, no matter what the Unionist parties are telling you. There are a number of other issues in education that are causing problems at the moment. There's a shortage of teachers worldwide. So there you go, very difficult. And they will need to think about increasing um, salaries for nurses, teachers, social workers, educational assistants, etc etc but of course westminster's putting the mockers on that at the moment because they've managed to sell in the nicking of everyone's cash and the bailing out of the banks as austerity there you are bravo scotty i like how scotland's got a first minister who is for the people i wish britain had the same kevin i think most of britain wishes that they had the scottish government running them because the real, genuine trust in the Scottish government. And it's all very well for the unionist parties to be, you know, grumping away in a corner. But nobody's listening. So there you are. Uh, Isis have just claimed it was one of their units that caused London, says George. Well, <clears throat> they would claim that anyway, George. I would take all these claims with a sack of salt, you know. Because if they were genuine, then they would put on uniforms and meet up with the British Army and saying any chance of a fight. Right? So there you go. So I would do all these claims with a sack of salt. Alfred, wake up before it's too late, says Shug McGinty. Sandy Howden says like a 35% pass. What are you talking about, Sandy? Are you talking about, you know... What are you on about? You know, we don't know. You need to qualify these comments. Um, ISIS believe the earth is flat, says Gary Williams. Scotty, why don't we see you on in the day? Do you have to wait for the night guard to leave the padded cell open, says Roy Brownlow. No, no, no. I've got a very, very big day job, Roy Brownlow. So there you go. And uh, I've put fortunes into radio so i'd like you to do the same i'd like you to help me out stick a five or a ten or into gofundme.com forward slash scotty hyphen mcclue or paypal dot me forward slash scotty mcclue all one word you'll get the two of them on the scotty mcclue website www.scotty hyphen mcclue dot com spare a five or a ten hour so that mcclue can uprate everything so there you go um, totally, Scotty. Free prescriptions, university fees only in Scotland. It should be everywhere. Louis Faber says, we created ISIS. Well, I don't know who you mean by we, Louis Faber. I never created ISIS, and I very much suspect you didn't either. So again, you'd need to qualify that. Colin Brown says, get ISIS out of Scotland. As far as I know, ISIS are not in Scotland, Colin. Uh, George W. Bush and his cronies caused ISIS, says George Mullen. Yes, I mean, I think everything fell apart when, uh, when the Iraq thing blew up and this country followed Bush. So there you are. Um, George Bush and his cronies. Education, Scotty, some subjects were given passes at 35% because of the mess they'd made. No, it's not the mess they'd made. There is no mess, Sandy. Education is a massive, massive thing to run, the same as the NHS. And you can't do it if you're being squeezed and squeezed and squeezed by governments towards privatization. So there you are. Remember... Governments do not want feral children running about during the day. So there we are. Uh, hope over fear. 
says Gary Williams. Great broadcast, Scotty McClure, says Henry Pollock Newton. I'm very glad, Henry, that it's worked out well for you. It certainly worked out well for the rest of us here, and I hope people will spend the rest of the week sharing and sharing and sharing this wonderful broadcast. I saw the other day that one of our broadcasts was over thousands and thousands and thousands of people had watched it. Fantastic. Agree, George Bush and Blair caused a lot of problems. And also, that's when the BBC became subservient. I'll explain that to you. Excuse me a second. Just say a quick mop down, you know. Uh, very, very hot in the studio tonight. Woo! Woo! Summer heat. Summer nights! Right. There we go. I'm back. McClue is back. Uh, in business here we go right um what was i going to tell you about yes the bbc since the bbc's inception 1922 as the british broadcasting company with four employees it now has over 27,000 employees paid for by you and me you and i right we cough up for that they come and take it i'd love a business like the bbc where you just take 150 quid or whatever it is off everyone so there you go now since its inception, Churchill actually offered John Reith a hundred pounds of his own money, which is a lot of money in the in in the nineteen twenties, if he would let him broadcast. And Lord Reith said, "The BBC is not for sale." All right, so there you are. But if you saw at the start of the Iraq War, massive fight between Number Ten and Broadcasting House, and we lost a very fine chairman. And we lost a very fine director general. They had to go because what was the board of governors just collapsed under the pressure, right? And the BBC were made out to be in the wrong. Now, they weren't in the wrong. So there we are. And we know they weren't in the wrong, but Downing Street won that fight. And um, that was when the BBC more or less became propaganda again. So it's happened. If you think about it, Thatcher got rid of a director general, right? Blair got rid of a director general and a chairman, all right? Now, once you have the government of the day interfering with the indigenous broadcaster of the day, that's when you've got problems. And it right, runs right back to the general strike in 1926. And nowadays, a lot of the BBC, which is still a fantastic organization in so many ways, but a lot of it is weakened because it's got to think we need to be on message here. They should never need to be on message. They should be reporting exactly what's happened. And it's very, very interesting that the public have now sussed that the so-called mainstream media could be capable of fake news. So there you go. Uh, tie knots in your hanky, Scotty. It'll be cooler than your bonnet. Gary not liking me. Click on the link, says Tracy McKinnon. <laughs> Sean Tierney. Scotty. Fantastic. Lovely to hear you, Sean. Stuart Buckins watching. Andy McNelly and 25 others have shared. Why don't you take your cap off if you're too hot, Scotty? I don't want to give away the fact that I don't have a lot of hair. See? Oh, I've shown you now. You've seen it. So there we go. Uh, we don't want to sit like that. We like the cap. The cap is good. Uh, I took it off for the Manchester tribute. You would see I did a tribute to Manchester. And I took my hat off, of course, out of respect. So you can get a swatch there. Thousands of pounds were raised for the homeless man who helped a woman in Manchester. He hasn't seen a penny of it, says Eddie Dober, Dobie Sr. Well, I hope he will, Eddie Dobie Sr., um, can anyone else click on the link to check for me, please, says Gary Williams. George Mullen, uh, Jess, George W. Bush was a war criminal. So they are, well, all these are, are, are matters of opinion. Uh, BBC is a propaganda box. You learnt me that in the century days, says Kevin Roberts. We have problems now with the terrorists, says Steve Burroughs. Yes, of course. You see, if you look back at British history, let me take you back to 1841. Britain was absolutely at the height of the British Empire there. So you had early Victoriana and uh, Lord Palmerston 
was the um, foreign secretary at the time. And was he foreign secretary or prime minister at the time? Anyway, Palmerston was the man with the say. And he used to call it gunboat diplomacy because Britain would send a gunboat because she had command of the seas. That was what Cape St. Vincent and Cape Finisterre in the 1790s and Camperdown with Admiral Camperdown from Dundee. All these things, Camperdown Park, yes, all the Dundonians are nodding. Absolutely. All these things gave us command of the sea because it was before air power. Air power only was really tried out in the First World War and quite useful, but uh, there should have been more strafing of the trenches if they'd wanted to win that. Terrible, terrible carnage, horrible thing. But that's what would have happened. And then Second World War, of course, the Battle of Britain, air power, superiority in the air was what was required. And Britain kept that up, but send a gunboat, gunboat diplomacy in the 1840s. Um, best thing in Wigan. Is the bus out? Hello from Wigan, Scotty, says Michael Pepperknight. Not at all. Give my regards. I still like to uh, have an Uncle Joe's. Marvellous stuff. Hi, Scotty. Ex-servicemen think funding should be taken away from Trident and put towards the terror crimes that are taking place. Do you agree? Well, it's been interesting. I uh, saw a question time the other night, and they were argy-bargy. Was it question? Yes, it was question time, I think. With uh, with Jeremy Corbyn was uh, on the uh, on the block, and um, do you like that one on the block? And uh, he was just saying he was talking about they were asking him, would you use um, the nuclear deterrent? You know, because you need to use it. That's the first thing they ask you to do as prime minister. Is would you be prepared to have a nuclear war? Would you be able to push the button? Blah blah blah. And um, what's interesting about it? right the whole nuclear thing a lady afterwards said i'm amazed that everybody's talking about blowing up the world you know with, with nuclear bombs she got a tremendous thunderous round of applause because once you go down that road the game's up i've told you before nikita khrushchev the russian leader when john f kennedy was president of the united states in the early 60s he said to John F. Kennedy, young man, be very careful about mobilizing your military, because once you mobilize them, you can't stop them. So there you are. Wonderful stuff. Hi from Northern Ireland, Scotty's a Stephen Baird. Hello there in Northern Ireland, Stephen Baird. It's lovely to know that you're watching. That's all I'd say about that, you know. Got to laugh. Um, no magic money tree, mayhem and rud. Uh, while bombs are being dropped in the Yemen, Always money for bombs, never money for, and they're saying something else. Well, somebody made the point the other night. They said, how come they can't find money for the Nazis and the teachers, but they can find it for the politicians? They can find it for nuclear weapons. They can find it to bail out the banks. There's no money tree. And I thought Theresa May lost so many billion brownie points by that patronizing attitude to that Nazi. Well, there's no, there's no money tree deal, you know, that sort of thing. And I thought, wrong, 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 wrong. Right, so there you are. Uh, there is no doubt. Uh, send the link to you in a DM, Tracy, says Gary Williams. Andy Taylor's watching, John O'Rook's watching. Back in the day, says Alan Smith. Um, MI5 was watching and spying on the nationalists. Well, they probably got it into their head that, um, you know, anything that's a threat to the country, but in actual fact, it's um, anything that's a threat to the crown should be the briefing there. Uh, the nationalists are not. In fact, nationalists is a funny term for the Scottish people because I think people link it to English nationalists, which is a totally different thing. English nationalists are right wing people. And, you know, have got dangerous undertones. Scottish nationalists, on the other hand, are a leftist centre caring party. That's what goes on. Uh, so, what have we got here? John McArdle has just shared the video. Yes, let's have some sharing, guys. And some typing in. What time is it? Yes, we've got five minutes. So, I'll just straighten up. Straighten up caps. There we are. Uh, Marvellous stuff. Off caps. And um, Andy McNally, uh, didn't MI5 murder Willie McRae? Andy, 
there is no evidence to that end right we don't know what went on with uh, with the Willie McRae setup, right? But uh, but we do know they were saying he'd killed himself. Willie had killed himself. He was very 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 worried at the time. Blah 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 blah. And that will go on like that. I mean, it took a long time to come out that the car had been moved and put back. So there you are, but not put back in the same place. Uh, so there we are. So I don't think we'll ever quite find out exactly what happened to uh, to Willie. Uh, can Scotland beat England, Scotty? Scotland can always beat England, depending what you're talking at. So there you are, if you want that. But remember, there's nothing wrong with English people. They're our brothers and sisters. Scotland's gripe is with the Westminster Parliament, and it's been exacerbated when our esteemed First Minister speaks to the British Prime Minister, her oppo, in Westminster, and gets told, now is not the time. You know, that sort of Thatcher-esque response, which is absolutely infuriating, and it's designed to infuriate, and I can see that. But now is the time. To quote the old song, now's the day and now's the hour, right? See, approach proud Edward's power. Football, says what, Monarchan, yes. Oh, it's nearly song time. The iPad's working too good tonight. I'm going to hear it, says George Mullen. George Mullen cannot stand my singing. So I take great pleasure in singing at the top of my voice. Yes, now the time is right, says John McCaddy. Um, why do politicians keep greeting about the homeless, given free furnished flats, have a look in Glasgow. Time for your song, says Alan Smith. It's getting there, Alan. We've still got another minute, and I like the nation to get their money's worth. Now, the second this broadcast finishes, you lot get sharing and sharing and sharing and sharing and telling everyone, I'm watching Scotty McClue because this is your show, all right? It's your show. Sorry, Scotty, I know she's not your favourite person. Let's bring Thatcher back, says Steve Burroughs. She was very, 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 very damaging to the fabric of this country. And she also got rid of the P5B Rovers. Uh, and that upset me because I love these cars. Go on, you know you want to sing, Scotty, says Martin Monaghan. Yes, of course I do. Scotty, does your voice hurt you? Because it hurts me. So there we are. There is nothing I wouldn't do for all of you. And there's nothing you wouldn't do for me. And that's why we spend our time doing nothing for each other. Okay. <laughs> Evening, Scotty, says Anne Rattree. Hello, Anne. Lovely to have you with us. Spread the word, guys. Scotty McClue is here for you, dinky-doo. I'm just about to disappear. It is, in fact, song time. So there we are. Scotland play England on White Rose Day, the 10th of June. A Jacobite celebration, says Shug McGinty. On that note... I take my leave of you, my darlings. Have a fabulous week. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Spread the word. Tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about Scotty McClue just for you saying Dinky Doo on Facebook Live on a Sunday night for one hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment. Until the next time, God willing, weather permitting, this is Scotty McClue saying to all of you, Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody. Of winter, say au revoir and a cheerio. Dinky do, my darlings. Cheerio. Scotty McClue has left the building. <laughs>